So now we can look at the first law of thermodynamics, which is basically just saying that the total energy of the universe is constant, that energy can't be created or destroyed. Here we go, energy can't be created or destroyed. Um, if the system loses energy, then the, en then the surroundings is going to gain energy. If the surroundings loses energy, then the system has to gain it. Um, but you can't create or destroy it. You can convert it from one form to another. Uh, you can exchange energy between the system and the surroundings, but you can't create it or destroy it. Now, when you're looking at all of the kinetic and potential energy um, of all the components in your system, that's, that's called internal energy. Uh, and then when you're looking at the, the change in internal energy, that's, that's what we have is delta E. So, th so internal energy is E, delta E, you're just looking at the final energy minus the initial energy. And, and uh, whenever you see this delta, you're always looking at final minus initial, this delta, that's the triangle. That's the, uh, the change in energy. Here we go. Um, so, right, the, um, final minus, minus initial. Now, the, the final and initial energy are hard to measure, the absolute energies, but we can relate the change in energy to things that are a little bit more easy, or a little easier to measure. Um, so delta, delta E is also related to the you know, amount of uh, heat that's being exchange, exchanged with the system, amount of work being done by the system or on the system. Um, so delta E is also equal to Q plus W. So this is the equation that we're going to use a lot. Q plus W, heat plus work. Um, now the sign of delta E is really important. So if delta E is positive, the change in energy is, uh, is positive, then the, the, system, the um, process or the reaction is called endothermic. It means the system is absorbing energy. So energy is going into your system. That's where the endo part comes. So energy is going into your system. Um, now, an exothermic reaction, the delta E is negative, and the system is releasing energy into the surroundings. So exothermic reactions, things like combustion reactions, are very exothermic. They're going to feel hot to you because they're releasing energy into the surroundings, and you're part of the surroundings. Now, an endothermic reaction, if you were to hold a flask that had an endothermic reaction uh, going on inside, it would feel cold to you because it's absorbing heat from your hand. So it's going to be absorbing heat from the surroundings, and you're part of the surroundings. Um, all right, so if the process is endothermic in one direction, it's exothermic in the other direction. So something like, um, let's look at the melting of like an, an ice cube. That's from going from a solid to a liquid. That's an endothermic process. It's absorbing heat, right, to go from a solid to a liquid. So to go from a liquid to a gas, that would be exothermic. So solid to liquid has to absorb heat. You absorb heat from the surroundings. That's an endothermic process. That melting process is endothermic. Now, freezing, to go from a liquid to a solid, is actually an exothermic. It's kind of hard to think about it in that direction. Um, but if you remember, if you remember it in, in the forward direction, that the solid to a liquid is endothermic. It's, it's going to absorb energy to, um, to melt that solid. That the reverse has to be exothermic. So it's endothermic in one direction, it's exothermic in the other. We'll get back to that when we look at Hess's law. Uh, so when energy is exchanged between the system and the surroundings, um, it's, it's either going to be exchanged as work or heat. So delta E, this is a big equation we have to remember. Uh, delta E is Q plus W. And we're going to have a lot of word problems that are just go going to kind of talk about, okay, well, the, uh, the system does this amount of work and it absorbs this much heat. And you have to be able to read those words and interpret the signs. So uh, let's see. So if the system is gaining heat, then Q is going to be positive. If the system is losing heat, it's negative. So think about it. you're the system, um, and heat's kind of like money. Do you like when people give you money? Yeah, that's a positive thing. Do you like when you have to give people money? No, that's a negative thing. So think about yourself as the system. All right, so if you're gaining something, that's good. If you're losing something, that's bad. So that's going to be negative. So again, you're going to have to read the problem and, and assign the proper sign. For work, if work's being done on the system, that's great. That's positive. Do you like to get your nails done? Sure. That's a positive thing. Uh, do you like to do work? If the system has to do the work, then that's negative. That's that's a negative thing. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to figure out all right, how much heat is, is going into the system or leaving the system. How much work is the system doing? Oops, is the system doing? How much work is being done on the system? Um, and add them up. And then you look at the change in energy. Delta E is Q plus W. If it's positive, if overall you're, you're gaining energy, that's great, it's endothermic. If you're losing energy, then it's going to be exothermic. So let's try some examples of these types of problems. So calculate the change in internal energy for a process in which this is going on. So we have a system absorbs 140 joules of heat. So right away you're going to say, okay, that's Q. So Q is 140 joules. 
and then assign the proper sign. So if the system is absorbing heat, that's like someone's giving you money. That's a positive thing. The system is gaining heat. That's good. Uh, it's gaining heat from the surroundings, and then it's doing a certain amount of work. It's doing 85 joules of work. So is that positive or negative? If the system is doing work, that's negative. So to add everything up, we're just going to have delta E is 140 minus 85. And check your units. So in the homework, some of these units might be might be different. So you might have joules there and kilojoules here. Make sure you're able to convert. To the same. It doesn't matter which one you go to, just as long as they're the same. You never want to subtract joules from kilojoules or, or something like that. Um, so in this case, what do we end up there with? 55? 55 joules? So make sure you say what your unit is too, because 55 joules is a lot different than you know, 55 kilojoules. All right, so a system gives off 22 joules of heat. All right, well, Q, that's heat. And is it positive or negative? Is the system gaining heat or is it losing heat? If the system is giving off heat, then it's losing heat, so that's negative. It's, we had to pay somebody. Work, all right, let's see about the work. Um, and uh, so the system gives off 22 joules of heat to the surroundings and does 45 joules of work on the surroundings. So the system is doing work, that's negative. So now we're going to add these up, and when you add those up, you get negative 67, negative 67 joules. Whoa. All right, negative 67 joules. And the last one, we have uh, a system absorbs 61 joules of heat from the surroundings, and the surroundings do 25 joules of work. So if the system is absorbing heat, that's positive 61 and the surroundings are doing work on the system. So that's like the system is getting its nails done. That's a positive. 25 joules. You can add all those up and you get 86 joules. So this is really just simple addition. The tricky part is assigning the sign. So you always think about yourself as being the system. Do you want to gain, uh, you want to gain heat? That's positive and you don't want to do work.